dear learners today we are going to discuss bs second semester's logic 2 papers unit 11 that is nature and kinds of induction first we'll have to know the definitions of inductive inferences now we studied from the uh, viewpoint of j s mill what j s mill have said about inductive inference j s mill he has defined induction as the operation of discovering and proving general proposition now, Jaismil also says that induction is the name given to the operation of the mind by which we infer that what we know to be true in particular cases or cases will be true in any other cases or cases of a similar kind. Francis Bacon, another philosopher, he says that so far as induction is concerned, induction is something which tries to discover the forms or causes of things Bacon also adopted the method of elimination. Now, see, whenever we are saying about induction, what is actually induction? We know that there are two kinds of inferences. One is the deductive inference, another is the inductive inference. Now, so far as deduction is concerned, in deduction, what we do? We always come to a particular conclusion with the help of general premise or premises. That is why, so far as deduction is concerned, its conclusion is always correct or valid but so far as inductive inferences are concerned in inductive inferences with the help of experience and observation we come to a particular proposition the conclusion is a general proposition and the premise or premises are particular propositions so sometimes we had to eliminate many things and sometimes we had to observe and experience many things and on the basis of those observation and experiences and elimination finally we come to a general conclusion now insofar as western logic is concerned in western logic induction is something which is used to mean both process and product of induction on the other hand so far as indian logic is concerned you will find that in indian logic the word reasoning it is used to mean process of reasoning not to the product okay so with the help of reasoning uh, we cannot get any product according to indian logic now we'll go to characteristics of inductive inferences what are the characteristics of inductive inferences first we'll go through of it and now then we'll discuss about it first it is said that inductive inference is essentially based on the observation of particular facts of experience observation and experiment supply its premises secondly in induction a general conclusion is established on the basis of particular facts of experience which is called generalization generalization is an important characteristics of in induction generalization is a process of arriving at a universal conclusion from facts about particular samples a very important and unique characteristic of induction is the involvement of the inductive leaf or leaf in the dog Inductive leap is a leap or jump from the known to the yet unknown or from the cases observed so far to the yet of the unobserved cases. It is a jump from certainty to uncertainty. Through the inductive leap, we will try to gain a new knowledge. Now see, I have already said that so far as induction is concerned, in induction, observation and experiment. These two things are very, very important. The premises are drawn with the help of observation and experiment. That means whatever premise, with the help of premises, we finally come to the conclusion. And we have already said that so far as uh, inductive inferences are concerned in inductive inferences, the premises are always particular. And on the basis of those particular premises, finally we have come to a general conclusion. And what technique we use uh, the technique what we use inductive inferences is observation and another technique which we used to uh, use here is the experiment that means observation and experiments are the two techniques with the help of which we can come to a general proposition okay now another uh, important thing is that so far as generalization is concerned for generalization we have to take the help of inductive leap now what is inductive leap I am just giving one example. Suppose we have uh, observed some of the instances like Ram is mortal, Hari is mortal, 
जदु इज मॉडल मधु इज मॉडल ओके एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दोज फैक्ट्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दोज फैक्ट्स फाइनली वी हैव कम टू आर कंक्लूजन दैट ऑल मैन अ मॉडल ओके से इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर एनी वन टू ऑब्जर्व एंड एक्सपीरियंस द मॉर्टेलिटी ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी इंडिविजुअल ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्स बिकॉज बिफोर माई एग्जिस्टेंट दैट मीन्स बिफोर आई वॉज बॉर्न ऑल्सो देर आर इंडिविजुअल हुर हु वेर डाइट एंड आफ्टर माई दे आफ्टर वन आई डाई आफ्टर दैट ऑल्सो इंडिविजुअल ह्यूमन बींग्स विल बॉर्न एंड दे विल ऑल्सो डाई बट इट इज नॉट माई कैपेसिटी टू टेक द experience of those people okay but because of the observation and experience which i have carried okay on the basis of that finally we have drawn a general conclusion that all men are mortal that means from some to all we had to jump okay from some to all we had to jump and that jump is called uh, inductive leap okay with the help of inductive leap only we can come to a general proposition from the particular premises now we will discuss some another characteristics see uh, what other characteristics of induction has said the conclusion of inductive inference is more probable or less probable but it can never be certain but inductive argument will provide stronger pro uh, probabilistic support and worse inductive argument will provide weaker probabilistic support for their conclusion the conclusion of induction goes beyond the premises the basis of going beyond the premise lies in two presuppositions the law of uniformity of nature and the law of causation these two principles guarantee the formal truth of induction and they are called formal grounds of scientific induction inductive inference is a non monotonic this is because new informations can change the strength of the inductive argument the importance of additional importance information is always a relevant consideration in inductive reasoning now see i have already said it that so far as induction is concerned it always based on it is always take the help of some particular proposition okay and here we always jump from some to all and that is why the conclusion of an inductive inference can never be certain it is always probable in nature okay if will give uh, will be able to give, provide more facts then its degree of probability will be less and if uh, will be able to provide only some experience uh, facts with the help of our experience then its risk of probability will be become high okay no but uh, whatever may be the condition its degrees will be differ but the quality or its more main characteristic will always be remain uncertain and probable okay it cannot be certain now so far as the conclusion is concerned what induction actually do it takes the help of two nature uh, two laws they are the law of uniformity of nature and the law of causation law of, what is law of uniformity of nature according to law of uniformity of nature nature behaves in the similar way under similar circumstances okay and what is law of causation law of causation says that every cause has an effect okay so on the basis of these two laws finally induction tries to come to a general conclusion now what are the stages of induction we will find that there are four stages of induction observation formation of hypothesis generalization and verification now what is observation observation is well defined perception for a certain definite purpose by it supplies the materials of induction it involves analysis and elimination okay now with the help of observation only we can see what are the materials of the particular argument or particular induction okay and on the basis of observation only we can eliminate some facts and we can accept some facts now second is the formation of hypothesis what is the formation of hypothesis a hypothesis means a provisional supposition suppose uh, we take something suppose we take that this this is true okay now why we have considered that this is true because we already have some experiences okay on the basis of those experiences finally we give the conclusion that this is true now when hypothesis is there we will have to try to uh make the hypothesis correct or we'll have to prove the hypothesis 
if uh, we will be able to prove the hypothesis to be true then the statement will be a law okay it will be correct forever and if we will not be able to prove the hypothesis or it will be proved as wrong then that particular statement will be dismissed okay now another uh, one is generalization another stage is generalization now what is generalization generalization is a process of arriving at general proposition on the observation of particular facts what uh, the things we have what which uh, we ha i have already discussed these things earlier that in induction induction what we do we arrive to a general statement with the help of particular statement with the help of particular statement and with the help of inductively finally we come to a general statement and this process is called generalization another thing is verification verification means examining by appealing to facts whether the general proposition which is arrived as it is really true or not true okay the says whenever we are referring a induction the conclusion of induction and the premises are actually uh, materially true the one of the important point is that they should be materially true because we always give importance to observation and experience but on the uh, so far as in deduction was uh, there in the case of deduction what happens in the case of deduction we only give importance to formal truth and not the material truth but in the induction you always give importance to material truth the subjective conditions of inductive inferences are freedom from prejudice patience and preservation belief in the uniformity of nature and the law of causation the points we have uh, whatever we have discussed earlier from the basis of those finally these points can be derived okay freedom from prejudice patience and preservation so i mean beliefs in the uniformity of nature and the law of causation now we'll discuss about the problem of induction what is the problem of induction induction seeks to establish the material truth of universal real proposition and the premises of inductions are derived from experience the problem of induction does refer to the question as to how it is possible for induction to arrive at the universal real proposition on the basis of observation of particular facts okay the main problem which is arised in uh, induction is how from the particular proposition will be able to come to a general proposition okay because we can observe for experience only some points but it is not possible for us to discuss or experience all the particular uh, points about the particular instance okay now what is the solution the philosopher has provided for this problem the solution to this problem uh, is the lies in the fact that in passing from the particular to general induction induction relies on two fundamental laws okay they are the laws of uniformity of nature and the laws of causation i have already told you according to uniformity law of uniformity of nature nature behaves in a similar circumstances a uh, similar way under similar circumstances okay so if we have observed that uh, suppose we have observed hundred of instances and they are behaving in the same way then on the basis of that by applying the law of uniformity of nature finally we will be able to come to the conclusion that uh, this particular instance or in future also this particular under these circumstances that particular in point will discuss in the similar way and other is the law other is the law of causation law of causation says that every cause has an effect without heaven or every even has a cause without having a cause nothing can happen okay if something is happening because of that uh, some uh, cause must have to be there okay and because of the presence of that particular cause only finally that event had, had happened so on the basis of those particular laws finally uh, induction tries to come to a general conclusion induction has to rely upon assumptions that the future will uniformly follow the past for example we assume that the sun will rise tomorrow as it has risen every day in the past okay now what are the kinds of induction 
if we'll see the kinds of induction then finally we'll find that there are two kinds of induction one is the induction proper and other is the induction improperly so called what is induction proper in induction pre proper what happened we come to the conclusion with the help of inductive leaf and so for induction improperly so called uh, in the case of indu uh, induction improperly so called we do not come to the conclusion with the help of inductive leaf now induction proper can be also divided into three points okay or three kinds there scientific induction unscientific induction and analogy now what is scientific induction scientific induction is the establishment of a general real proposition okay based on observation of particular instances in reliance on the principle of the uniformity of nature and law of causation by applying or by relying law of uniformity of nature and the law of causation scientific induction always try uh, with the help of observation scientific induction come to a general proposition now what is unscientific induction unscientific induction is the establishment of a universal real proposition on the basis of the mere uniform or contradicted experience without any attempt at discovering causal connection okay here only uniformity of nature law of uniformity of nature is taken into consideration but here law of help of law of condition uh, causation will not take for example all crows are black on the help of uh, for establishing this statement all crows are black we cannot take the law of causation the every even has a cause does not apply here okay so here only law of uniformity of nature will be applied and other is the analogy analogy is a kind of induction in which on the basis of observation of resemblance in some particular properties between two things we infer further resemblance in some other property between them again so far as uh, induction improperly so called is concerned it is also divided into three kinds there are perfect induction induction by parity of reasoning and colligation of facts now what is perfect induction perfect induction is the establishment of a universal proposition on an examination of the particular instances covered by it as for example all known planets move around the sun okay here what we do we separately examine each and every instance okay all planets all known planets are moving around the sun all move, uh, mo uh, known planets move around the sun okay for this we have to ex uh, we have to examine and observe all the different planets and we have by observing those planets we have seen that all uh, all the planets are move uh, are moving around the sun and on the basis of that experience finally we have come to the conclusion that all known planets move around the sun now what is induction by parity of reasoning induction by parity of reasoning is a process of inference in which we establish a general proposition on the ground that the same reasoning which establishes a particular case will establish every other similar case coming under the same proposition okay suppose we have uh, today we are observing cloud and on the basis of that we can say that it will be rain okay so in future also whenever we'll see clouds then on the basis of our observation we will be uh, or our experience will be said that it will be rain okay another kind is the colligation of facts now what is the colligation of fact james mill he defines colligation of facts as the mental operation which establishes us to bring a number of actually observed phenomena under a description or which enable us to sum up a number of detail in a similar proposition he has given one example he said that a navigator while sailing in the ocean discovers a land okay at first he cannot determine whether it is a continent or an island but he goes around it and after a few days he finds he has completely sailed round it he then brings together observed facts under the conception of an island and declares it is to be a island now some fallacies are there in induction now what are those fallacies inductive fallacies usually why inductive fallacies occur actually inductive inductive fallacies occur when the premises of inductive arguments fail to provide the desirable amount of probabilistic support for the conclusion inductive fallacies are of 
two kinds they are inferential and another is the non inferential now so far as inferential uh, fallacies are concerned under inferential fallacies there are three kinds of fallacies there are fallacies of causation fallacies of generalization and fallacies of analogy that means if uh, we'll find one event and it will not support the cause then it will commit fallacy of causation fallacies of generalization if enough experience or enough observation will not be able to uh, provide and the general statements will be proved to be wrong then it will be fallacy of uh, generalization and fallacy of analogy when our uh, process of resemblance is not proper then it will become fallacy of analogy now uh, in non inferential proposition uh, fallacies also there are two kinds of fallacies fallacies of observation and fallacies of explanation okay suppose we are not uh, we have failed to observe the facts then on the basis of that if we will draw one conclusion then that will occur fallacy of that will commit fallacy of observation and another is the fallacy of explanation if we will not be able to provide uh, the proper explanation of the conclusion okay so this is in brief about the induction the unit called induction and i think uh, you have understood it properly you please go through your slm and try to understand it again okay thank you